Hey there, Latin One. So here we are in chapter 11. Uh, so let's take a look at the glossary on page 79, A Slave Runs Away. Okay. Uh, so the first one that we see is Via Appia. Via Appia. Uh, now, this is called the Appian Way. Uh, the roads were named after the men who built them or, you know, had enough money to build them. So uh, there you go. Uh, so it's, it's just literally the Appian Way. Uh, the next word you see is willicus, willicus. Now, willicus, willici, right? It's a masculine word. It means the overseer, okay, the farm manager. It's actually technically where the word William comes from, too. It means protector. Uh, let's see, the next word, dominus, dominus. Dominus, domini, means master. It's masculine. It means master. It's where you get the word dominate, dominance. Uh, the, this is in uh, anno domini, in the year of our Lord. Okay, a lord, a master. Next word is uh, ab sum ab esse. Okay, and that's just, if you cover up the ab, that's just sum esse. Uh, so it's to be, and then ab means away. Okay, ab is a part of the sid space. Okay. Uh, the next one is, are, oh, it's where we get the word absent from, by the way. Next word is area, area. Uh, so it's area, area. And this is the threshing floor. So what you have is you go through a gate and then you have an open floor area and that's where people thresh. And what they do is they gather a bunch of grain uh, that they've harvested and they put it in baskets and they go like this with the baskets. And gravity uh, causes the things that are heavier than air to fall and the husks kind of just spill out eventually. And then the whole floor is covered in what's called thresh. Uh, and then they put a, uh, a bar or a, uh, a, a, a piece of wood there uh, between the, the floor of the threshing floor and the rest of the house. Uh, so you walk across the threshing floor and then you step over that, uh, that board that's there to hold the thresh, also known as the threshold, uh, to get into the house. So it's the open space. It's, it's what, where we get the word area from, obviously. Um, the next one we see is plenus. Now, plenus is the masculine version. Plena would be the feminine version, right? So plenus, plena. That's where we get the word plenty from. Uh, quam, quam is my absolutely favorite word in all of Latin. It's just fun to say. Quam, quam. Uh, and it means although. Uh, memorize it. I'll be hurt if you don't. Uh, muso, musare. Okay, and this means to mutter. And this is one of those verbs that's onomatopoetic, okay? So, muso, muso, muso. It's, it sounds like you're muttering. You don't even have to open your mouth to say muso. Uh, so, uh, muso, musare. And the two S's can sometimes turn into two T's uh, later in life. So, muso, musare turned into muto, mutare, and so mute, uh, and, and on and on, okay, to mutter. Uh, next word, werbero, werberare. Okay, this is uh, to beat, as in to grab that beating wand and start beating someone with it. Uh, so uh, this is where we get reverberate from, right? You clock someone on the head and it reverberates. Uh, id quod, memorize this. Id quod, it means that which. Don't translate it as what. Translate it as that which, okay? Ira. So we have iratus, which is angered, right, or angry. And anger is its own thing. Ira, irai. Feminine, okay, uh, is where we get the word ire from. Ila nocte. Ila nocte. So ila means that, okay, it's feminine. This is ablative feminine uh, from ile, ila, ilud. We'll get into that later. Uh, nocte comes from nox, noctis, feminine. So ila nocte, ablative of time when. Okay, it's where we get the word nocturnal from. Uh, the next one, effugio, effugera which is to flee. I like that better than running away or escaping. So flee, to flee. Uh, this is where you get fugitive from, uh, refugee, things like that. Next word that you see there, impedio impedire. So this has the word for foot in there, ped, which means foot. So you're getting in the way of someone's feet. And so their feet can't go, impedire, right? So they can't go. Uh, so you're impeding them, you're hindering them, okay? Next one, se celare, and we're going to get into what that means, uh, possibly, uh, it'll be pretty, pretty easy, but it's to hide himself. Don't just say to hide, it means to hide himself. You don't just hide, you hide something, so he hid himself. The last one there uh, is uh, porta, porta, portai, feminine, 
uh, gate. Uh, that's where we get portal from, portable, port. It's the gate, the thing that you bring things through. Okay. Uh, and then, as I recall, yes, on page 82, there is more vocabulary. Uh, the very uh, beginning, pater, patrice, masculine, means father. It's where you get paternal from. Mater, matris, feminine. It's where you get maternal from. Parens, parentis. Uh, it can be either masculine or feminine. It means parent. It actually comes from the Latin verb for to obey. Uh, it's where you get parental from. Frater, fratrice uh, is brother, and it's where you get fraternity from. Soror, sororis is where you get sorority from, okay? Filius, filii, okay, it's where you get affiliate from. And then filia, filii, that's the feminine version, right? So, son and daughter. Liberi, liberorum, these are children, okay? So that's a mixed group or a group that you're not sure of the gender, so you just default to the masculine because it's Rome. Uh, Weir, weary actually means husband or man as in gentleman. Uh, and then uxor, uxoris means wife, okay? You get virile from weir. Uh, you get uxorious, one who loves the ladies, like uh, Henry VIII, he was uxorious. Uh, and then down below 11C, you get numerus numeri, which means number. That's where you get numeral from, okay? So that is the whole glossary for chapter 10. What I want you to do now is read page 83, because it's got more words for you. Uh, as well as pages 85 to 87. All right. Um, yeah, that'll do. I'll hit the button.